Hi, I'm Matt from HockeyReviews.ca and we have a ton of broken sticks in here. This is a video I wanted to make for quite a long time and I think that this is kind of the perfect time to do it because this stick has come out and I'm doing a review on it which is the CCM Trigger 8 Pro. The reason that this is kind of relevant for this is because CCM has been doing something recently and we've seen it on the F the Go stick, uh, the new tack stick and this one right here where it has their dual feel technology in this one specifically been changing the puck feel of the blade without really changing the stiffness of the blade this is something that's kind of important and i always talk about puck feel in this review on the trigger 8 pro and the review of the trigger 8 pro that puck feel is something that is important i should probably get this done now because going forward ccm6 blade feel and the puck feel is going to be different this is kind of relevant. What we have here is a box of broken pro stock and retail sticks. So these are either collected from people I play against. For example, this was from a guy I played against. He said, Hey, I know you collect are collecting broken sticks. I broke my AS4. Do you want, do you want it? And I was like, absolutely. This is AS4 pro. It's a retail stick. So this will give us a good idea of what was in this one compared to like some of the other CCM pro stock sticks that are in here. Dick's box was very generously given to me by Harman's Hockey. So they do some cool recycling things with broken sticks. For example, I bought a trigger eight set, or sorry, this is seven, trigger seven set of broken triggers, and it, it's a coaster, which is pretty awesome. I have three of these, and then I have this pretty awesome, this has tactile grip on it too, which I absolutely love, bottle opener, and this is, again, a trigger seven pro. So they do some awesome upcycling type things of that. I think it's considered upcycling where they take something, a broken product and make an actual product out of it instead of just wasting it. So kind of a cool idea and huge thanks to them for supplying basically everything in here and helping me out with this it is greatly appreciated. And it wouldn't have been possible without their help. So before we jump into all this and kind of taking a look at these sticks and talking more about blade feel, if you want to support the channel and you're buying hockey equipment, anything, and you live in Canada, United States, if you're in the US, check out the links in the description to Pure Hockey. If you're in Canada, to Hockey Supremacy. Clicking any of those links gives me a kickback to help support the channel so I can keep making more content and doing more reviews and videos. Otherwise, if you want to support the channel, check out the links in the description to buy me a coffee. Everything through any of those links always comes back into the channel so I can keep making more content and doing more videos also to cover this right away i'm wearing yeah they're just garden gloves but they are that covering stuff obviously this is broken carbon fiber this is probably not the best glove to wear for it but it's better than what i anything else i had and you can see there's like strands of it everywhere and it will poke me places so i am trying to do my best in not stabbing myself with carbon so that's why i'm wearing these gloves okay so a quick thing about puck feel i've always talked about puck feel when i do my reviews it's one of the most important things to me if i was buying a stick tomorrow shooting is important but depends on how you play and i'm not a goal scorer i'm a passer i'm a like more puck control person who makes sure you have possession stuff like that and when i play defense i want to be able to like know where the puck is when i'm it hits my stick and everything like that. One of the reasons I was such a fan of the Bauer Geo is because of that dampened puck feel. This stick has a more dampened puck feel than what the Trigger 7 Pro does and other CCM sticks do and they kind of do going forward. It's something that's very hard to talk about in a review and it's something you can't really quantify unless you use it yourself. So I always do that just as it's kind of like you can kind of hear the pinginess of it and that's what I'm talking about when I'm saying pinginess pinginess is like the more pingy it is generally the less dampened it is and you can feel that vibrations going through your hands like the bauer hyper light stick is very pingy blade and you can feel those vibrations going straight through your hands where the bauer nexus is a lot more dampened so it doesn't go through as much now puck feel again totally personal preference some people like that pinginess feeling and they want every vibration transferred into their hands some people like a more dampened feel and that more dampened feel is more like the old wood blades and things like that and it's how your hands kind of translate the feeling of of the puck through the stick to you again i like the dampened blades so ccm moving to this makes me more happy now there's a few things that can be done to make a blade feel differently the biggest is really the foams on the inside which we'll take a look at but the carbon weave can also make a significant change on how pucks feel well i shouldn't say significant it makes a big enough change that you notice it but we'll talk about that later on and we're dive into what is inside of these sticks here and kind of get an idea of how like different construction methods can affect how honestly just the puck feels another thing that also i want to call out because it's done it in the past this is a res tech so you can see this one has my custom logo on it but this res tech also does greatly affect puck feel yeah it does other things as well and it's kind of an interesting product but puck feel is legitimately affected by this thing right here and it kind of makes sense because it does feel it's not like it feels stiffer but it does have a different material kind of construction to it so this being a bauer geo this had a very dampened blade 
putting on this res tech completely transformed how that blade felt. So kind of interesting how you can kind of get a product like this and kind of switch it if you really wanted to. It also offers other benefits that they talk about and I've honestly, I have noticed it made a difference. Check out my full review of that one, but that is something that's kind of there and it can make a difference for you. If you had a more dampened blade, you want to go something more pingy, you could theoretically just put a res tech on there and you would get kind of that result. Okay, so we're gonna start off here with this stick, which kind of started off my whole journey down this and trying to do this was because of this stick. So I found this broken. This is obviously an ultrasonic. This is that weird shape. This is the last of the Bauer Supreme sticks. It's their high kick. It's uh, other people call mid kicks. It's basically dead now, <laughs> to be honest. Bauer killed it. And this had one of the softest blades I've ever used. And I absolutely love the puck feel. And I saw one of these broken at my local rink. And I was like, I absolutely need that because I saw where it was broken. It was like basically like this. Somehow this top piece was just chipped off of it. I had no idea how. And it gave me the blade construction. I'm like, yes, I absolutely need this stick to talk about what the material and everything on here is. And retail sticks kind of have a very interesting construction on it because Bauer and some other companies have tried things where they put like a gel inside. Well, this was a Bauer specific thing, I believe. They put a gel inside. So when the carbon or the foam started breaking it, the gel was supposed to expand and fill in those foams. So the puck feel would last supposedly longer. I don't know really how much that worked, but that was the idea behind it. The 2S Pro, I believe had that in there. So this stick is interesting, obviously, as you can see, and this will kind of give an idea of what is in here and how the stuff in here translates to puck. So you can see in here is the foam. Now, obviously you have the carbon around it and then you have this white stuff in there that is a foam. And if you look closely in here, right in the middle, right there, I'm trying to get that on camera. There is a carbon bridge in there as well. But when we look at the other part, you'll see that kind of going through there. Now, this foam obviously is a dampening material, but Sometimes you want a stiffer foam so you get less dampening. Other times you want a really softer foam, which is what this one is. This one is kind of a softer foam and it absorbs more of that impact that you would feel. So when you take a look at this itself, you can see how this blade ended up being constructed where it has that carbon piece there, which you could see on the heel kind of going into it. Then you had this other foam down here, that white foam up there, and you can even see like it looks like stitching going through it. And then when you look at the side, you have the two different foam layers. So I can't tell you what the two tech reasons between these different foams are. When you're touching it, the foam itself, this one is, is almost spongy. It's pretty soft. This one is harder. So I'm not totally sure if this was the one doing a lot of the dampening, even though it would really be kind of above the puck, as you can see kind of right here as well, or if it was kind of just a joint thing together and that they worked together in that sense. So if you look at the rest of the blade, this piece would have gone right down there and you can see it, that white foam also went into the toe. So this kind of middle piece right here went from the kind of right here all the way to about right there. So the toe was that white foam and it was constructed kind of like that, as you can see. So you can do different constructions with the internal materials on here. And this is an excellent example of it. And this stick was a very, very dampened stick and you can kind of see what the layout is on here. But again, I can't say specifically what foams do which. No, the one downfall of using pro stock sticks is you don't know the specs of the pros. So unfortunately, we're kind of stuck at, I think this is what this is, this is what it was labeled as, but unless you have the sticker at the top for CCM, you don't really know what the build was. And even for Bauer, if it's like this stick, which is a Jimmy VC ADV stick, you don't really know what the blade construction on that was and if it was something different. So we're gonna go with what we can kind of see here. I'm not gonna say this is what all the kind of sticks ended up performing as, or this is what all ADVs type things have, but it's an idea of the different constructions and what is in there. So we're gonna look at this one here, which is the 2S Pro, and this is a Supreme. I don't know if this was a retail stick, but it has that thing inside there, which I was talking about. So this was also a very dampened overall feeling, and there is this little, you can see that red stuff right there going through here, and in here as well and on the face right here so you can see that so that is actually kind of gooey and that is that material that i was talking about so hopefully this kind of comes off on camera but you can see it's like a gel and that material you can kind of scrape away with the corners of it that was that material that i was talking about where they put a gel in there to try to fill in the cracks to make the blade last longer so this would have been a very soft feeling blade Bauer's idea behind it, or at least their marketing behind it was with the Supreme, you want to be softer so the puck stays on longer and gets a fuller load. And I don't, let's be real, I don't know if that actually makes any difference or not, but that was their marketing behind it. And that gel in there was to make the 
foams in here last longer. So when you look at this stick, you can see there's no real carbon bridges through it or anything. It's just the outer layer with that foam going through the whole way with that gel in it. We'll see with some other sticks where they do have different bridges and carbon kind of cores going through it. True is one of those companies that you can see it straight through the actual stick itself without even cutting it open. It's kind of cool. This is one of those that has nothing in there. So it's all soft and foam. And so we'll move on to the next one here, which is that VC ADV that I mentioned. So again, I don't know what the blade construction on this is. This is a real ADV. I think it was a Hyperlite 1. Um, but then you can see the taper here. It's an ADV taper. And it had the BGP or whatever the code is on it. You can see the blade construction here is this white foam. And it's cut all the way through. And it has no carbon bridges through it. The interesting thing I find with this one is the new Hyperlites are super, super pingy and they have that really reactive kind of puck feel where it vibrates through you. This one isn't quite as much as that, but it does have all that white foam all the way through it. Here is what I believe is a retail fly light and we have the rest of the blade right here. And you can see it's just that white foam going through it too. So I'm not sure if this blade core was kind of taken forward through from the ADV because that ADV, this was kind of the next thing in line, even though it was a new taper and everything, right? It was like that Easton tech, but you can see that blade core is the same going through it like that. It's just a single foam all the way through. And then we look at this right here, and this is an Ilya Mikheyev 2N Pro XL. So this is 2N, which was the retail stick, XL is the extra light. So it was kind of a bit of an ADV construction going on here to get it lighter. And it just has that white through here. So again, I don't know if this is like this blade, is custom to the pro or not and they wanted something slightly different or if this is more of a dampened feel to it because obviously it's broken and i couldn't use it and test it out more construction pieces where the last three looked at had a pretty similar overall blade construction and they're all kind of based on an adv because even though the hyperlite wasn't really a full adv it was kind of taking like moving forward with some ideas behind that we have one more vapor adv so this is another one like that vc one and again same construction on that blade core exact same idea Nothing crazy going on here with the Bauer ones. Well, we saw the gel, which was pretty crazy. Now we are getting onto something very interesting. This is a Jason Spezza Easton GX build. I think it was a GX. Well, it might've been labeled a GX, but it's Spezza's build. I can't remember exactly what uh, he used in this, but it was an Easton stick and it had its date on there. So if someone really wants to look it up, they can. But this is a very interesting stick because when you look at what is in here, you have a weird construction in here. So this is a case where we can really see Easton was doing some interesting tech in here and Easton had a pretty famous blade feel. A lot of their sticks, people love them. The S19 was a classic, let's be honest. Look at this, you have one piece of foam, another piece of foam, another piece of foam separated by two carbon bridges here. And then it looks like a different type of foam and a whole carbon like tube going all the way through the middle. So I don't know the purpose behind this, unfortunately. Again, I would have to talk to the one of the people who was working on these Easton blades to figure out what was going on here. But this is a totally unique design compared to what we've seen. And this would give a very specific blade feel and also try to do different things with the blade. Like these carbon pieces are possibly for stiffening so when you actually load into that stick it doesn't flex as much and kind of instantly gives response right but this foam could have been put in there for more dampening reasoning compared to something else so very interesting in this sense and this is one of the weird ones and kind of like okay now you can see what companies kind of do to do some different things in here and really going more than just adding some well the gel is pretty interesting but more than just adding a single type of foam throughout it so next we are going to look at this warrior covert so technically this says it's a covert edge taper but it's not an edge taper because it's all you can see one there's like no taper so this is probably hd1 like a dynasty stick i'd say i don't know for sure but you can see it definitely doesn't have that multiple shaped edge taper on here and it's just a graphic as it says shows right here paul stastny unknown covert model it's not a covert model I have been talking about warrior sticks uh, when I've been doing the reviews on and wish that they didn't get away from this carbon fiber because it honestly their old blade fields felt fantastic and I kind of missed this to be totally honest. Now there is a bunch of pros on this. I did a post on Instagram and it showed a Cogliano stick where it had actual DX build. So it had that UD carbon in the shaft and then down here was this older style of blade. Now we are getting into some, to some very interesting blade builds on this one because you can see this thing has a bunch of foams. You can see like you have a center channel, top channel, top channel with some green foams on the corners as well. So again, I don't know what these are doing. I didn't reach out to them to try to talk about it. 
I'm just want to show these off and show how they can use different technology and different foams and different builds to get different puck feel out of things because this stick does feel very different for puck feel these old warrior blades compared to the newer ones which are a lot more pingy now this green foam thing in here looks very similar to the foam that was in this Easton stick and honestly the interior foams kind of look pretty close to each other Yes, you're getting the same colors, but they're probably not identical, but they look pretty close. And you can see that green on both of them. So very interesting that that is through both. The thing with this one, obviously, you do have those carbon pieces going through it. And you can't really see it on the back, like through the carbon fiber weave here. But you can see it when you cut it open and you look at it this way and you can see just that foam going through it and those pieces. So very interesting piece here and it brings me back to my favorite days of warrior sticks where they had this smaller weave on their blades. And here we have an Alpha DX, it's labeled as that. I think this is a real DX. You can kind of see the taper does look like that saber taper and it does have the blade of what the DX is. So they've since moved away from this carbon and use bigger weave, like a more K weave so the, the actual carbon fiber weave is wider on here like you can see down here and everything so this one honestly looks like it's straight up the same blade that is what on the covert one this is kind of my complaint right now with warrior is that all their blades feel the exact same and i wish they did something slightly different it's kind of interesting that this is one of the dx sticks and well that one probably was a dynasty or something the fact that the blades were the exact same going through their pro models is kind of interesting and you can still see this type of blade used by a bunch of pros today so interesting again that green foam is showing up again and again so now we are getting into the ccm stuff because we have a ton of it here and this is that as4 pro this was a retail stick this had an extremely pingy blade which now just sounds hollow because the stick is broken but this stick was very 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 pingy and the puck feel on it was not dampened whatsoever you could really feel it on your shots as you can see through the construction on this foam all the way through with one carbon right here going through right here and you can see with the other pieces of this but and you can see on this piece too that carbon piece that is going through the bottom of the blade because that would have been right there so interesting again different type of constructions on these and we're going to see a huge variance of ccm sticks because ccm pro socks are really hard to diagnose what they are you don't really know what they all are and again pros get custom stuff so we're going to do the best we can and see what we're looking at so we have a ton of uh, ccm ft3s or i should say jet speeds in here and again, I'm not positive if they're real jet speeds or not. Pro Stock Sticks, CCM are hard to talk about. I'm going to keep bringing that up over and over again. But we have a new construction in this blade, which is going in here where we now have two bars going through it. So you have a carbon bar there, bar, and then the foam's going through it. And we look at the other sides, you can see that bar going through it as well. So again, this bar is probably doing something for stiffness and stiffening up the blade, making it more stable throughout the shot load and everything. So that's probably why that's going through there. While you do have obviously the foam pieces for dampening on there. Again, I'm not sure exactly what blade this is, so I can't make any assumptions and see what this is. But this is going to be a kind of common thing showing going forward. So I'm assuming a lot of these sticks, like the next one we're going to look at, which isn't technically a jet speed or anything, is going to be a similar build overall which is brings us to this one, which was labeled an AS3 Pro, but when we look at the actual core itself, it is just the same as what it was before. So again, you have, or I should say same as that FT3 Pro, foam, foam, bridge, bridge. And then when you look on this side as well, you can see the carbon's coming up through here and then the carbon is running through it right there as well and right here as well. So again, very interesting things here and you can see this uh, foam kind of shaven off the top well i should say the carbon shaven off the top and you can see kind of the construction of the foam in there again dampening and feel i have found a lot of pros like a more dampened feel than people do at retail the thing i've noticed a lot at retail is people who think they have a like a pingier blade and one that gives immediate feedback shoots better doesn't necessarily shoot better or shoot harder or shoot quicker but people think from feeling that, that it's coming off harder. So I find that that's kind of a thing that retail has to deal with, unfortunately, because people want that instant gratification and feedback. Here is an FT4 Pro. So according to the previous ones, this should be pretty close to what we had before. And we have a whole new foam color. As you can see, we have this interesting yellow thing. And we're gonna see a different yellow in a second, but this stick should have probably had a similar foam as some of the other ones, but as you can see, it's its own thing. So I don't know if this is a softer foam or what, but you can see a kind of similar overall construction foam in the middle top bottom two bridges going through it and when you stick it on there you can see that's where the bridge would have gone and you can see it 
on this piece as well. And you can see it on this piece as well right there. So again, different foam package, going to give you a different puck feel, kind of interesting thing all through there. And then we have this stick, which I don't even know what it is. It didn't have a label on it. Uh, it was just the bottom piece of a stick. And this one is a more traditional retail one. I think we saw the CCMs where it had that one bridge at the bottom and just foam through it. So just a kind of a more normal one there. And then we get to this one, which is the JetSpeed FT3 Pro, and it has no foam in it. So I don't know what's up with this stick. This is a super weird one. It's labeled a FT3 Pro. I don't know what it is. I don't know if this was just a total mistake in the stick itself, but man, do these feel totally different. So as you can see here, totally different construction on this. One foam, two foam, three foams, no foams, but you can see the bridge difference. You have bridge, bridge, bridge going through. So that's three different bridges through this stick and it is a taller slight blade than some of the other ones, but there is no foams in most of the actual blade itself. So this blade came totally together when I had it and I cut it like this. So this wasn't like someone somehow took the foams out. It just didn't have any foams in it. So really odd through here, because you can see that carbon is just totally hollow and you can kind of squish it together because there's nothing filling it up. So I don't know the purpose behind this blade whatsoever. You can see a bit of foam looking right there, but it's nowhere else. Like it's right there too, right? But nowhere else. This is a super weird construction. I have no clue what it is. It's totally empty and it's hollow and it sounds really weird. And yeah, it is cut now, so it sounds even weirder, but super odd stick with that one. And finally, we get to the last broken stick here. So this one is a weird one. This is says it's a Trigger 6 Pro, but I'm pretty sure it's a five. And this is a totally different foam. So Triggers did have a bit of a softer blade retail wise. I don't know if this is a real Trigger. It does look like it with the taper right here, but this is, well, usually retail was a softer foam on here and it does feel like it's a touch. It does have a rib right here. And CCM always said they had a stiffer toe piece. So when you kind of loaded the stick, it would be softer here and it would stiffen up right here. So when you release it with the toe, so there wasn't any force given with any give on here and it stayed sturdy and how you wanted it to. Now, there is also a rib right here. So you can kind of see it on this piece. It's like a little black. It looks like it's folded over. I took a knife to this and tried to cut in there and that is a carbon rib going through it. And you can see it kind of right here as well, that black piece kind of going over like right at the tip right there. And you can kind of see it when we do that, you can kind of see it kind of right there where my left thumb is. And it's kind of in there as a rib as well. So I believe that is also there for increased stiffness as well. So interesting how you see all these different materials going through it and how companies do different things with the blades to get a different overall puck feel and everything like that. So pros obviously have more options in retail. They can choose this. Bauer has a pretty good custom program where you can choose different blades and stuff, but it's not nothing like this, right? Pros can choose exactly what they want on different blades. And this is a pretty awesome thing and awesome idea. So now we are going to talk about the carbon weaves themselves and how carbon weave actually does affect puck feel. And it's not just some gimmick thing. It, it does make a difference. And I will be doing a full review of these pro sticks and all the different options. I'm sorry it took so long uh, to pro and I'm sorry it took so long to people, but things have happened and just gotten in the way. The one thing I was going to test on these and that I have and I figured it out is if the blade feel is different between them because of the different carbon weaves and everything like that. So some players are very particular in the type of stick they're using to the point of where they have the same stick made over and over again in a different graphic, like Connor McDavid, for example. And I posted this on Instagram where I showed Sherwood prototype sticks that had this weave on here. So this is a very unique basket weave. Well, it's not very unique. It's been around for a while, but when you see it, you know exactly what it is when you look at it. I've seen pro stocks with this weave on it from Ponda Dreams from McDavid himself, and you can see it over and over again. I'm pretty sure it's an original super tax build, and that is the stick that he uses over and over and over again and keeps going to, even though it looks like whatever the new stick CCM has him in, or now I think it's an older one, but he was like using FT6. It was really this build behind it because frankly, even if you change the carbon weaves on it, the weaves make a difference and it will change the feeling. So if you have something you're very comfortable with, you will still want to go back to what that other thing was. So there is, which kind of brings us to this stick right here and this one down here. So this stick is called the G63 from ProStockHockeySticks.com. And this stick was a custom one I ordered. The interesting thing about this stick is it's built to be like a Bauer G3 build. So if people in the stick world know exactly what that is, today there's a bunch of pros that still use it. This is basically what ends up being the carbon composition of it, where you have this 
type of K, I can't remember the exact number, but you can see this weave through it and you have this smaller weave in the blade. And that makes a difference. This stick, even though it has the exact same blade as that one in terms of internal construction, as well as the red line, feels differently when using it because of this carbon weave that goes through it on the blade. Now that weave specifically on that one is also very famously the Easton weave. So if you had those old Easton sticks, it was the same weave that you can see here. Same idea, that very tiny, tiny weave construction and it does make the blade feel different and people love it. And that's why people don't wanna get away from the blade feeling and everything. So very interesting idea there. And honestly, I feel like it's one of the reasons McDavid, besides being ridiculously superstitious, doesn't wanna get away from this. It feels very unique. This stick, the third line, does feel different than the other ones when you use them and it's a different feeling. So if you like that feeling, you'll obviously want to stay with that stick. Now, one thing that makes me extremely sad that this company no longer really does hockey stuff, this is an SCX stick. So this one was a prototype. So you can see it has that smaller weave on the shaft right here, and you get onto the blade and it has a bigger weave. So they were trying some things with blade here. So they're using this bigger weave because they said it was stronger and it would uh, allow for a better shot if you put it on the back because it wouldn't recoil and stiffen up the blade. Flip it over, you have that smaller, like Easton famous weave through there and puck feel was different. So they worried about puck feel in here. They wanted the puck feel to be this. They also said this being softer allowed it to flex a bit. So I think that was kind of some marketing crap. This weave here would have made it feel differently than if it was this way all the way through. So very interesting that they went that route and I'm really sad that they don't exist anymore because that's an awesome idea and I love how that was. Now, obviously when you have a company like CCM who is using the same weave across all their lines. So this is their Sigmatax uh, ST, ST, TP or whatever it's called. I can't remember exactly what it is. It will be somewhere on here, but it is that weave where it has the one kind of line that's longer than the other, right? So you have less overlap. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, this is going to be the same weave over across all their blades on their retail sticks, but the interior build is going to be different. So you have different foams or you have their new, like it's a weird carbon structure underneath. It's like a honeycomb thing that's supposed to be more for dampening. So that whole idea of that blade feel comes from what's inside of it when the outer layer is going to be the same thing but then you do have stuff like this where yes this having that smaller weave to it makes it the blade honestly just feel different than other sticks do and it's a again total personal preference thing it's something that is very hard to quantify and be like yeah this is how it feels it's something you just have to get used to and use and try out and you have to find out what works for you. I find when I'm using certain sticks like the Nexus Geo, which I absolutely loved, and honestly this trigger too because of that softer blade, when I'm making hard passes and breakout passes, it's not like it makes it better, but you use it, you make the play, and it just feels really nice in your hands and you feel good about it and you're comfortable with it. So people want that feeling over and over again and kind of figure out what they enjoy more and use more as well as sometimes with people with that dampening blade, they feel like because it's a dampened feeling to it, they can feel exactly where the puck is on the blade and it can just, it's more controlling for them. Pucks don't bounce off of it for passes a bit, which I find that it kind of true, but at the same time, I find a flex deals with that a lot too. So you have a ton of different variables in everything you do in hockey with hockey sticks. And this is just another one of them that is a lot of personal preference and that's basically the gist of it. A lot of people don't talk about blade feel. If I had to pick my stick going forward, I could only use that stick. Blade feel would play a very, very significant factor into it. That would be one of the biggest things that and grip. Remember that this was a very long video. Hopefully it was helpful. This is an interesting thing I've been talking about for a long time for blade feels. Bauer has done some awesome things where they've had kind of tech demos of cut in like not even cut in half but the whole front layer of a blade taken off and they brought them to retail stores i actually reached out at one point to someone at bauer and i never got a response about it because i wanted to get those from them so i could do a video like this never got a response but that is kind of the idea behind it and i would love if at some point i could like work with a company and kind of go through this stuff and kind of feel like oh what did you do here what did you do here and kind of see the internals of it like that'd be a really cool idea kind of go into what's making with sticks and because the carbon weaves totally makes a difference these ones i can totally feel one from the other and to, compared to the red line and there's certain ones i just love the feel of more like this easton model e doesn't shoot the best stick i have but i absolutely love using it because of that grip and because of the blade feel it just feels fantastic 
So hopefully this video was interesting. Hopefully it was helpful. Hopefully someone has learned something for blade feel. It was very long, but that's how all my videos are. And I like talking about gear and I find it's something a lot of people are kind of missing out on and not really going into depth of this stuff. So stuff like this is kind of interesting to me and I would love to see it. Hopefully this was interesting and helpful. Reviews for a bunch of sticks are coming out in the future. I am unfortunately have a backlog. You'll see that Trigger 8 Pro soon. And this video should kind of be a precursor to it just of how this blade does make a difference and feels totally different. So it was kind of cool to see because I've been pushing for softer blades at retail for a while now. And that's kind of coming to fruition and becoming more like pro sock sticks. So thank you very much for watching this video. Remember to like this video, subscribe to me on YouTube, hit the bell icon, it's very useful. Leave a comment below, tell me what your favorite feeling stick is. Tell me the next stick I should use. If you want me to review specific company sticks, let the company themselves on social media know, like CCM for example. Tell CCM on there you wanna see Hawk Reviews review their newest stick and their gear. I greatly appreciate it. Hope I can get more gear to do more reviews on and make more content on. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you're buying hockey equipment anyways, check out the links in the description. If you wanna support the channel, if you're in Canada, Hockey Supremacy, if you're in the US, Pure Hockey, clicking those links, making a purchase gives me a kickback so I can get getting more gear and making more content. Otherwise, check out the links in the description to buy me a coffee. Everything through any of those links always comes back in the channel so I can keep making more content and doing more reviews. Thank you very much for watching and take it easy. You're watching hockeyreviews.ca.